Well, greetings, folks. Glad to be with you today. Just got back from a wonderful time in New Mexico. and But today I want to talk to you about uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But before I do that, I want to ask you if you're on YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, wherever you're at, that you can subscribe. Would you turn on notifications? Would you put comments in below? Be really nice and polite. Tell me what you think about this video. Let me know if you have any questions. And also, as always, you can go to lewisdcn.com for more content. We'll talk about that a little bit down the road here because I do have a new package coming out I want to share with you. Um, you know, are you like me? Because I hope, I hope you're like this part of me, and that is I want more. I'm always looking for the more of God. I'm always looking for, uh, I read the word, I study, I pray. And what am I after? I'm after more uh, relationship, more fellowship, more of the presence of God, more of the wisdom of God. All these things are inheritance to us. They are part of our uh, privileges and rights as covenant believers and those who belong to Christ. In some circles, this might be frowned upon, you know, as if knowing God more about God is, you know, or knowing about God is enough. But just knowing about God's not enough. And, you know, I grew up Catholic, and so just knowing about God was enough. I wanted to know God. I wanted to spend time with God. That was my thing that I was looking for before I became a Christian. And to me, what falls way short of anything is this notion of, well, when people say, just be happy, you should just, you know, be grateful for what you have. And this I find very, very... Um, troubling content too just when people want me to you know would tell me to back off you don't need to know everything and i wasn't trying to know everything but i was trying to know those things that were prompting my heart and that i want to have questions i want to have right doctrine as much as i want to have revelation i certainly want to have right doctrine and so you know not knowing you know not having intimacy with god falls way short of the intent of the cross. And God said this multiple times, multiple times he would, you know, tell tell in his word his intent. And his intent wasn't for you just to be satisfied um, with the status quo or um, to not know him. Now, this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols for what? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. Now you have to know what's unclean to know what you shouldn't be touching. And I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me. Now, I don't know about you, but this kind of said something to me. It said that God had an intent for me that maybe I wasn't experiencing when I first got saved. You know, part of the thing that I had to learn was God's love for me. What was the new covenant about? Did God really want me to, um, you know, would God dwell with me? You know, depending on what you get saved into, and I'll explain that in a second, depend, it depends what you get in your you know, when you come to Christ. In other words, if you only believe that Christ uh, died to forgive you of sins, then forgiveness of sins you'll get. But you might not get intimacy. You might not get oneness. You might not get freedom. You might not get deliverance. So, you know, the problem is we we sometimes preach the gospel of salvation, not the gospel of the kingdom, which he opens prison doors and opens blind eyes. And not just, by the way, not just metaphorically opening blind eyes and deaf ears, but also very, very much spiritually. And so we, we struggle with this concept a lot. And I, um, I want you to know that what I discovered was God wants to dwell with us in powerful ways. Matter of fact, the name Emmanuel means God with us. Yet many people struggle with this due to lack of faith or knowledge. Now, knowledge because they never heard that this was possible. You know, um, some circles and and, and some, you know, I meet Christians and I didn't know that they could fellowship with God in real ways. And if you don't know something, how can you ask for it? And faith comes by hearing, but faith cannot come from something we do not hear. You can read the word, but that is not the source of faith. Faith comes from hearing. I know he says word of God, but that word there is rhema. And it's the, it's the intricate voice of God speaking to us that brings about faith. And he gives us all a measure of faith. 
Now, speaking of faith, I do have a new package that is coming out, and I do want you to be able to get it. And it's uh, called Faith. And I'm going through all these aspects of faith. And if you'll go to lewisdcn.com and use the code LIVINGFAITH, you'll receive $25 off the package. And I will put a link down in the comments section so you can you can go and um, get that. Because I really do want you to understand faith. Faith is more than just a belief system. It's actually something that apprehends promises. And I want you to apprehend the promises that God has made for you. Now, Paul prayed this prayer in Ephesians, and it's so marvelous. I, I've dwelled on it. I'll give you a story about it in a second. But let's just start in Ephesians 1.15. For this reason, I too, having heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you and your love for all the saints. This is talking about Ephesus. Do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that your eyes may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. It's an amazing prayer, and it's one that you should pray you know, over yourself often. I do, quite frequently. On September 20th, uh, actually September 16th, 2004, Apostle Greg rarely prayed this over me. He was giving me a word, and um, I needed, so desperately needed a word in my life in this moment, because I was trying to make some major decisions. I quit my job. And Greg gave me this word, and one of the things he said at the end of the word was, now God's going to grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and quick understanding. And a heart of quick understanding, he said. Now this prayer actually just, you know, this prophecy over my life, began to change my life and my dynamic with God and our relationship. It was already really good. Like I would I would say it was really good, but there was this cry in my heart for more, and it's still there for the more of God. And I would begin to see things as the Holy Spirit would reveal them to me that I never saw before. And by the way, that still happens today. And I pray this often over many people, as many as I can, I'll pray that God would just give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. And why in the knowledge of Jesus? And we'll get to that in a second, but this is why. The one thing that I want to caution first, though, is that Holy Spirit will never contradict the word. So you're not going to come up with universal salvation. You're not going to come up with sexual morality and sexual morality more. That's not revelation. That's wishful thinking. Okay, because the Holy Spirit cannot contradict himself. And you have to understand something that God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's not going to contradict Jesus. Jesus is not going to contradict the Father. Father's not going to contradict the Spirit. You can't separate them, but on paper. But he will often contradict my understanding. You know, just like for someone who might not believe in like my father-in-law didn't believe in the baptism of the Spirit, didn't believe it at all. And me and Kathy, I first got filled with the Spirit. Kathy got filled with the Spirit. We both started speaking in tongues. We told her parents, who were Baptist preachers, and they were like skeptical. And her father was like, the devil can use that. And we sent her mother to a Christian retreat, and charismatic Christian retreat for women. It was just a two, three-day thing. We paid for it and sent her and, our, um, and my wife's sister to it. And um, the last night, they asked who wants to be prayed for, <laughs> prayed and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And from our sister's uh, 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 eyewitness account, her mother was in front of her. And when they laid hands on her mother, she was praying in tongues before she hit the ground. And then Angie, her sister, got filled with the Holy Spirit. Kathy's mother came back and looked at her husband, Larry, and said, Larry, he's real. Like, this is real. And he said, pray for me. And she laid her hands on him and he got filled with the spirit. So you don't know what you don't know. So you can't really ask for it. This is why I'm saying like, when you ask for the more of God, but I also want to tell you something else about the, the if you're going to walk in revelation, stuff like this, you have to ask questions. And I think a lot of people are afraid to ask questions. So I'll read something and I, I mean, I know what it says, but I don't understand the depth of why did God put this in there? Why God put that in there? And I will ask, and sometimes, by the way, it takes a year before God might even talk to me about that. Because I might be so far ahead of his plan, you know, or he might have he might have touched that. So I he has to reveal these other things to me. Like, I'm on a journey with him now. 
I think that we should ask for more revelation of Jesus Christ because through that that Paul learned the gospel of the kingdom. You think Paul learned it through the scriptures, but he doesn't sit there and say that. That's not Paul's testimony. He used the scriptures. But in Galatians 1.11, he says, For I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So can we see why Paul says now, man, I'm going to pray over you, church of Ephesus, that you receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus so that your hearts would be enlightened and you'd have understanding of the kingdom and what it all means. It says this in John 16, 13, as Jesus says, he's going to send the spirit. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will, not, he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. And I want you to know, like there's things that, you know, not everyone has the same revelation. Why is that? Well, one, one is not everyone's asking for more revelation. Some people are perfectly happy knowing they're forgiven and going to heaven someday. And that's their theology. But that's not really the new covenant. Matter of fact, the new covenant promise was in heaven. It was with him forever. And since he is coming back to the earth someday, maybe you'll want to be with him. I always tell people, you don't want to stay home when he goes on a road trip. The Holy Spirit wants to share things with us. He wants to show us who Jesus is and what he is doing. This isn't just for the apostles, as some people might think. There's no limit to this. This isn't supposed to happen until the Bible comes, which would mean the Holy Spirit stopped doing what he was sent to do. I mean, then he, what is he doing? Well, you know, there's no more, nothing more to talk about. You know, I guess I'll just hang out until Jesus comes. Oh, that's ridiculous. Jeremiah 31, 31 says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. So that old covenant's done with, folks, because they broke it. Now listen to what it says. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. Remember, this, this covenant we're in as a uh, as a Italian believer, this covenant was first and, and always would be first to the Jew and to Israel. I will put my law within them and on their heart I will write it. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. They will not teach again each man to his neighbor and each man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me. And what's talking about, it's talking about now we all have access because you know, it says, it says of Israel that Israel saw the acts, but Moses knew his ways. So, you know, you could see what God's doing, but not understand why and how. And, and God wants us all to know these things now. See, in the old covenant, only the prophets and maybe a couple kings knew this stuff, but not everyone knew it. And God wants us all to know it. Okay. It says, it won't say to his brother anymore, Know the Lord, for they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Isn't that a beautiful promise? See, you have the right to ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He has the privilege of giving it to you, and he, he'll know when it's time. I believe if you ask, I believe he'll say yes, because I believe that when we're asking the more revelation of who he is, I think he likes that. I think that's pleasing to him because we're seeking his face. Psalm 40 says, you said to me, seek, uh, you said in my heart, seek your face and my face did I seek. I think it says something like that. You said to me, seek my face and your face did I seek. See, folks, God wants you to seek him. God wants you to know him. God wants you to know more. He's no respecter of people and it's not, well, I'm not an apostle. That doesn't matter. Let me say this again. That doesn't matter. Let me say it one more time. That doesn't matter. He loves you. He's called you by name. You're in the new covenant. And this promise is for all of those who said yes to Jesus.
And I hope that, and I really do hope that from this point on, you will begin this journey of going after God. Maybe you feel like you're not worthy. Maybe you've sinned. Maybe you think God doesn't, you know, God will never do. No, let me explain something to you. Ask God to forgive you. That's what you do. You ask God to forgive you and cleanse you from all your sin. 1 John 1, 9. And then you say, Lord, would you grant me the spirit of repentance? Will you grant me repentance? I might come back into your presence and cleanse me. And boy, when you repent, you know, say, God, whatever was in my heart, get that out of there. I don't want this tripping me up the rest of my life. Get that out of me. And he'll do it. Now, you might have to pray more than once. You might have to pray fervently. And that means you're also... But look, don't look at the sin. Look at him. Look at him, not the sin. What you behold, you become. Amen? Now, let me pray this prayer that Greg rarely prayed over me. And if you, if you reach out and grab it and say, Yes, Lord, I want that, then it's for you too. Father, right now, just as Apostle Greg rarely prayed over me and lays hands on me, I lay my hands on everyone listening and I say this. Receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That your heart and also a heart of quick understanding that you'll understand the things you both hear and see in the spirit. That you would love Jesus more and that you would know what is the richness of his salvation and kingdom towards us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Okay. And don't forget, you can go to lewisdc.com and get that series. Uh, that's available for you. I did have it up here this whole time, but there you go. So it's there. I just want to keep that there so you can always find that and look for that link below. With the, I'll also have the code Living Faith is the code to receive $25 off. Go download the Gate Church app. Go download. Um, uh, Lewis D. Sienna app once you buy the product and uh, go go check out thegatejacks.com if you want and there's a whole bunch of places you can find me I'm on Rumble I'm also on YouTube and I'm also on Facebook God bless you you have a great day I love you and I pray that God floods you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him have a great day bye bye